So hi guys, this is lesson 15, form 1, chapter 4, ratio, rates and proportions. Okay, so today we will try to understand how to solve problems in, I mean, solve problems involving ratio. Okay, just one part of it first. Now, what do you need to know? What do you need to be able to do by the end of this one hour, say? You must be able to find equivalent ratios and write a ratio in its simplest form. That's what you need to know. You should also be able to share an amount into a given ratio. Later, you will see questions and be able to solve more complicated ratio problems. Now, don't worry too much about this. Let's get into examples, okay? So here, introduction to ratio. Ah, just look at the picture first, all right? Can you see there, those guys, those people there are in different colors of uniform, I suppose. See, some are light blue, some are dark blue, some are yellow, some are purple, some are green, some are black, right? Sometimes they can be actually arranged in a given ratio. Who knows what made them, uh, you know, uh, arranged in such a way. However, that's just a little thingy there. Let's get back to some starter activities. Now this one is a recap, a little bit of your fractions because the basis of ratio comes from fractions. So let's give us um, some questions here. Let's try to answer some questions here. Half of 24, can we try that? Half of 24, what would that be? 12. 12, okay, so I'm going to click on the target board here. Okay, I'm gonna cross it off. Okay, good. How about the rest? What about half of 32? 16. You can put it in the chat, guys. Half of 32, 16. Very, oh, sorry. Uh, this is not half. Huh? This is quarter of 32. Quarter of 32 is how much? So you take 32 and divide by 4. Okay, and you get 8. How about one-fifth of 15? Now, I hope you remember the word of means times, okay? So, one-fifth of 15 means 1 over 5 times 15. And that can be made into 15 divided by 3. Sorry, 15 divided by 5, and that gives you 3. So, one-fifth of 15 is 3, is 3. Another way to show this, to represent this, is also using a fraction diagram. One-fifth. Uh, for example, this is one-fifth, okay? All right, maybe the total here is 15. So one-fifth of 15, that is what this question means when I draw it out. Every question here can be drawn out like this. So that one-fifth means out of 15, 15 can be anything. Maybe this is 15 ringgit, or maybe this is 15 chocolates, okay? And you give one fifth to say Fatin. So Fatin gets how many chocolates? Fatin gets three chocolates. That's how you get it into real life, okay? Questions here. How about two fifth of 15? If one fifth was three, two fifth is six. Now, all these ideas, okay, this, all these. There's one important word here that you must always remember. The word is called part. Now, this word is important when it comes to this topic ratio. When I say three quarter, it means three parts out of four. When I say five eight, I mean five parts out of eight parts. When I say two seven, it means two parts out of seven parts of 63. So drawn into, uh, wait, hold on. If I were to solve this question, of course I can do it mathematically. I'll just say two over seven multiplied by 63. And over here, 63 and seven can be divided. This will be nine. And then nine times two would be 18. How would I draw this out as fraction? This is standard six work. I would draw seven parts, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And I would shade two parts. Can be any two parts. You see, the total here is 63. 
and two parts out of 63 is 18. Maybe this is 63 marbles. Okay, Tristan had two seventh, two seventh of it was red marbles. Ah, you see, you see, you can change the question in such a way. How many red marbles were there? There were 18 red marbles. So I'm gonna go on next to the next page. I think here we're kind of okay here. Guys, you okay with this question? This is just a starter of your standard six. Recap a little bit, okay? This word, okay, this five eight of fifty-six. All these are revision of your fraction. Okay. Let's move on. Wait, where can I move on? Oh, hold on. Okay. Oh, answers coming up here. Hmm. All right. Three seventh of twenty-one is nine. Okay, and so on, so forth. Uh, it's okay. I'm not doing this target board thingy here. Okay. Anyways, uh, let's move. A ratio is a way of comparing amounts of something. We use a colon to represent the word two, for colon mark like this. For example, look at these sweets. The ratio of blue to green sweets. So I would write it as blue to green. I'll put this colon mark, okay? And how many blues are there? One, two, three. So three blues. How many greens are there? Four greens, okay? All together, there are how many chocolates or sweets? Seven sweets. Blue to green is three to four. Green to blue what do you think the ratio of green to blue is? I believe this we have done it in standard six, if you have been in my class. Put the ratio, all of you in your chat. What is the ratio of green to blue? Very good, Danya. How about the rest, guys? Come on, it's an easy answer there. Why three to three, Tristan? How many greens are there? There are four greens, yes. What about total to blue? What is the ratio of total to blue? Uh, Krish, are you answering me this now? Total to blue? Yeah, that's wrong. Tristan is correct. Total is seven, blue is three. You see that? Which one comes first? Okay. What about green to total? What about the ratio of green to total? That's right, Krish. That's right, correct, Kristen. Four to seven. Okay, four to seven. So you understand the position is important. Okay, let's clear this. Okay, what else do we have here? So... Why isn't the ratio four to three? Now, as blue sweets were mentioned first, we take them to be the first number in the ratio. So they said blue first. So that's the first number. If I said total first, then that's the first number. So you must always be careful what is to what. That is something you must remember, okay? All right, now we can treat ratios in the same way that we do with fractions. And that is by dividing it with the highest common factor. Don't get too confused. For example, look at this. Six to nine. That's how you read it. Six to nine. In other words, guys, remember the word I said earlier? Parts. Six parts to nine parts. Okay? Do you see that? Six parts. Okay? It's like six parts of anything to nine parts. For example, uh, let's say you wanted to make some cake and you needed six parts of sugar, okay, to nine parts of flour. You see that? That's a real example, six parts of sugar. When I say parts, you can see six cups and then you use the same thing, nine cups. If you say six um, milliliters, and then you also use the same um, 
uh, unit over there to nine milliliters. If you say six kilogram, then you also refer, you're referring to nine kilogram on the other side. But when it comes to ratio, we don't use those units. We have to make it the same kilogram to kilogram or milliliter to milliliter, whatever it is, then we cut it off and we just say six to nine. Let's say the ratio of sugar to flour is six to nine. You see that? So how does this relate to fraction? You will see in a while, okay? So what happens when you divide by three? on the six and you take nine and also divide by three. It becomes simplified to two parts to three, two to three parts. Can you see that? You actually simplified it? Okay, oh, let's go back a bit. Okay, all right. Now write down the ratios, leaving your answer in their simplest form. Okay, your turn now. All of you in your chat, okay. Write down the ratio of large building bricks to small building bricks based on what you see on the screen. Large to small. How many large are there? Large bricks are there to how many small? Are there only eight? One, two, three, four, five. Six. Okay. Mm. Some say four to eight. Okay, four to eight. And then some said one to two. Okay, ratios can be simplified. Okay, ratios can be simplified. So yes, initially you can say four to eight. And that is the same as one to two. It's the same. Simplify it. You remember how you did simplifying fractions in standard six? Same idea. Okay, divide by four on the left-hand side, divide by four on the right-hand side. It simplifies to one to two. It means what? For every one large brick, there are two small bricks. That's what it means. Okay, what it means here is for every large brick, this one large brick will have two small bricks. This one large brick will have two small bricks. This one large brick will have two small bricks. And this one large brick will have two. This is called ratio. Okay, let's clear and let's move on. What about the next question, guys? Pink sweets to yellow sweets. Put it in your, in your, I mean, in your chat. The ratio of pink sweets to yellow sweets. Good, Dania. Pink to yellow. Very good, seven, Tristan. I can see there are pink. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pink. Yes or not? All of you can see there are eight pink sweets, right? So the first thing you read is eight. Then how many? Pinks, I mean, yellow sweets are there. There are six. This is the original ratio. But then ratios can be simplified, isn't it? So eight and six, what? Oh, go get your glasses, okay? Eight and six, what is the number that you can divide with? Two. It's two. So eight divided by two would be four and six divided by two would be three. How did you get two to three, Fatin? The rest are correct. Tristan, you have to change. Uh, Tristan, simplify. Rishab, okay, all simplified already. How does Krish, how does 8 to 6 become 1 to 3, Krish? Are you wrong already? Sorry. Okay. It's all right. Learn from mistakes. Do you understand now? Okay. All right. Let's move on. Clear? Now, the ratio of suns to moons, all of you. Uh, the sun is the yellow one, eh? in case you don't know. Moon is the grey one. 
one to one. Why so fast? Huh? Suns to moon. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hello. There are six suns there. <laughs> yeah, this one are. Uh, we are talking about who said there's only one sun and one moon, or? Uh, there, there are, are lot, lot, there are a lot of moons, yeah. but no, only one sun. No, every star that you see is a sun. Excuse me. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, sun six suns star. there. Yeah, sun sun is a star. star. Yes. So there are six suns there to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, to nine moons over there. Okay. So six to nine, you simplify it, it becomes two to three. So for every two part of suns, you have three moons. For every two suns, you have three moons. Tristan, do you understand what's happening? Okay. All right, good. So now let's move on to the next uh, slide. We've seen more questions. Now write down the ratios, leaving your answer in their simplest form. Ah, okay, all of you now. Orange juices to cups of tea. I think orange juice is the orange one with the straw there. Okay, and to cups of tea. Write down your ratio in the simplest form. Come on, get into chat quick. Count your orange juices, count your teas, simplify them. Two answers came in. Rishabh and Danya. Good. How about the rest? Orange, yeah? orange juice to tea. Tristan came in, very good. Krish came in, very good. Fatin? Yeah, the green colour cup looks more like Milo than coffee. <laughs> Gloria, all right, Fatin, okay, good. Gloria, okay, so far, you're right, girl. Okay, all of you are correct. Three to two is the correct answer. Let's move on with the next one. Dogs to cats. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, guys. Dogs to cats to rabbits. Now, remember, fraction is not necessarily just two parts. Huh? There can be three parts or there can be four parts. Now, in this case, how many dogs to how many cats to how many rabbits? So give me the original and then you can simplify it. All right, so the original will be like, how many dogs are there? One, two, three, let me count myself. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight dogs to how many cats? One, two cats. And I think the rabbits are 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So, Rishabh, your answer is right. Eight to two to 10, that's your original. Then when you simplify it, yes, Krish, that's correct. Tristan, correct. Four to one to five. Fatin, where did we get your two? 8, 2 to 10. Remember this. 8 dogs to 2 cats and to 10 rabbits becomes 4 dogs, 4 parts. 4 to 1 to 5. Everything gets divided. Okay? So understand, Fatin? 4 to 1 to 5. Okay, and that's how you read it. Four to one to five. You can add the word parts. Four parts to one part to five parts. Okay? All right, good. Let's move on then. Clear? All right, write down the ratios. Oh, we have done this already. Okay? Uh, this one is all the answers. Okay? All right, now guys. Let's look at this. How do the second part eh, is to share ratios. How do we share ratios? Say, for example, you have 60, in this case, 60 pounds. Make it 60 ringgit. How do you share it in the ratio of two parts to three? Maybe you have two kids. You want to give your younger person, younger child, two parts, and you want to give your elder child three parts. 
It's not about being equal here. Okay. Just parts. All right. $60 into two and three. So over here, if I'm going to explain this using a very old method, I'll use my rectangle. And I will say that all together, there are five parts. One, two, three, four, and five. So I want to know two parts is how much, and then the other part is three. That's it. All together, there are 60. So what do I do with my 60 first? I take my 60 and I will divide into five parts. You see that? Every part will become 12, 12, 12, 12, 12. Of course, this is drawing to help you understand. Once you already can understand this, you don't have to draw. Lah. You straight away take. I want to know how I'm going to divide 60 into ratio of 2 to 3, right? So, two parts. It's actually two. Oh, I can't write this, Andrea. I'll have to use my pen. Okay. Two over five. Why I use five? Because five is my total. Multiplied by 60. That will give you how much money or how much money will two part be? Remember we did this in the beginning, this type of question. So 60 divided by 12, uh, 5 is 12. 12 times 2 is 24. Three parts, 3 over 5. The total is 5 times with 60. So 12 times 3, this is 36. So your $60 or 60 ringgit or 60 pounds will go into 24 to 36. You see that? Sorry, capital lead. No, no worries. Okay, 24 to 36. That's how your $60 gets divided into parts, into ratio of two to three. Let's see how the question answers it, okay? How many parts are we sharing this into? Five parts. The first person is going to get two of these five parts, so two-fifths of the total amount. So two-fifths of 60, 24. This is what, why we had that earlier, the practice. The second person is going to get three out of these five parts. So three-fifths of the total, and you would get 36. So therefore, the money shared is $24 to $36, I mean, pounds, okay? How could we check the answer? Add together the answers. 24 plus 36. Do you get 60? Yes. Now, your turn. How do we divide this? Put your answer in the chat now, okay? Into a ratio of 3 to 4 to 1. Try now. It's your turn now. Divide 80 pounds into the ratio of 3 parts to 4 parts to 1 part. So every part would be how much? Thank you, Risha. Well done. Direct message, yeah? you can direct message to me. Oh, Risha, can you give me answer? How about the rest, guys? Don't wait for me. Were you following the previous question? Find your total. How many parts are there all together? Eight parts. So take your $80 and divide into the eight parts. One part will be how much then? 10. So three parts will be how much? So remember this, one part, wait, hold on. so three out of eight, that's the total, multiplied by 80. That's what you're going to do. So this will give you 30 pounds for the three parts. Four out of eight parts, that's total, multiplied by 80 pounds. So you're going to have 40 pounds here. And the last one, 1 over 8 
multiplied by 80 pounds. We are not simplifying. The simplified version is here. We are finding the part where the money is in this given ratio. Okay, it's not unsimplified. Lah. Okay, and this is how much? This is just 10. So your answer should have been 30 pounds to 40 pounds to 10 pounds. That's right. So Fatin, Krish, of course, the first answer came in from Rishabh. Well done, Danya, good. Krish, good. Fatin, good. Tristan, do you understand what's happening, Gloria? Yes. Okay, good. Now let's move on. So this is how they get. First, you calculate how many parts, then every part multiplied from that total part. Okay? So the first person gets 30, the second person gets 40, the third person gets 1 8, which is 10. Therefore, the money shed is 30 to 40 to 10. Okay, more questions for y'all. Okay, so over here, what I'm going to do here, guys, I'm going to print screen this and I'm going to share it in the Telegram later so that you can attempt some of these questions. Okay, but we will do maybe two or three questions here. Let's try number four. Okay, all of you look at number four. Share 770 pounds in the ratio of four to seven. Try that now. Okay, 770 pounds into the ratio of four to seven. Put your answer in the chat. Remember, always find what is the total. Okay, very good, Rishabh. You gave me the answer so fast. Well done. Let me check. I'm asking you to do uh, number four, huh, guys. All right, well done, Danya. Two of you have given me your answers. Ooh, yeah, sure, why not? You could use your calculator, your form one, right? Krish, no, there's no 40 to 70, no. How many parts are there altogether? 11 parts. Yes or not? So all you need to do is take 4 over 7 for the 4 parts and multiply it by 770. Krish, pay attention. 770 and 7, can you see? This is so easy. This is 11. Can? 110. 110 times 4 is how much? 440. I did the bar method, the one in the rectangle. I got wait, wait, wait. Why, why, miscalculated that 11. Even if you get the bar method, also it's the same. Okay. Hold on. Eh? Let me double check. 770 divided by 11. Oh, it's not 4 over 7. I'm sorry. This is 4 over 11. Okay. That's what got it wrong. Okay. 4 over 11. 11 is the total, okay? So, which means over here, okay, we are going to divide 770 with, each, with 11. So, each part is 70. Four parts would be 70 times 4 would be 280. That's how you get your first part. And then the second one would be 7 over 11 multiplied by 770. Again, this is 1 and this is 70. 7 times 70 will be 49 here and with a 0 at the back, 490. So your answer should have been 280 to 490. Do you understand? So all of you kind of got it right. So let's go to look at number 7. Number 7 is a word problem. Okay, Jolene makes a pattern out of beads. You know what's beads, right? She uses only red and silver beads in the ratio of five to one. Remember what came first, huh? Red came first. Red to silver is five to one. 
That means every part where there are five red beads, she will have one silver bead. I don't know how she designs it, but this is the ratio. How many beads will she need for a pattern with 30 beads in it? So how many or how many red beads will she need? Okay, so now, now our question is her necklace or whatever she's going to make has got only 30 beads. That is the total. Okay, all right. So all together here, if she uses five red and one silver, all together got how many here? Five plus one, got six beads already, yes or not? She's using six beads. So from six beads, now her beads is now 30. Okay, can you see? Six beads is a ratio of five to one. That's six beads. But her necklace now, whatever she has, is 30 beads on it. How did the six become 30? What happened to six and it became 30? Five. Times five. five. Yes or not? Times five. So every part also will times five. So five times five, 25. Silver, one times five, five. 25 plus five, will she still get 30 bits? Is she still having 30 bits? Yes. Is the ratio still correct? Yes. So following this ratio, how many red beads will she need? How many red beads, guys? 25 red beads. Do you see? Do you understand the question, Tristan? Yes. Mm, okay. I would consider this all a little challenging, but doable. Okay, doable. Let's go to number eight. Okay. Karen has a bag of 44 marbles. She shares them with Kelsey in the ratio of one to three. Karen keeps the larger share for herself. So one is Kelsey. Am I right? Because one is smaller than three. One part to three parts. Who gets the one part? Kelsey gets the one part. Who gets the bigger part? Karen gets the three parts. How do we know? Karen keeps the larger share for herself. Can you see that? So this is the larger share. Karen has a bag of 44 marbles. So all together, we do not know. Okay, but the total here is 44 marbles. Do you understand? Okay. How many marbles does she give to Kelsey? So very simple. One part is what Kelsey gets out of a total of how many? What? How many parts are there all together here? Four parts. Four parts. You see that? Two, one plus three is four. So all together, there are four parts here. One is for Kelsey. Three is for Carol. So how do I find how many marbles Kelsey will get? One out of four out of 44. This is how you get it. One quarter of 44. And hello, you know this Eleven. one, right? 44 divided Eleven. by 4. 11. So Kelsey will get 11 marbles. And this girl, Carol, will get the rest. I think the rest would be 33 marbles. All together, 44 marbles. It's not about fair or unfair. I think the ratio is just about uh, putting in certain parts. This happens everywhere around us, you know, especially in the kitchen when we cook. You see? Look, the next one, pastry over there, number nine. Let's look at number nine. James makes pastry. He uses flour to butter in the ratio of two to one. So remember, what comes first? Flour comes first, then butter comes, and the ratio is two parts of flour to one part of butter. The total mass of his pastry is 600 grams. What quantity of flour and butter did he use? So, how many parts are there all together here? Three parts. Can you see? There are three parts. The total is three parts. Again, the three parts is like this. If you want to draw three parts. Uh, this is three parts. This is flour, two parts, and this is butter, one part. 
and the total here is 600 grams. How do I find the quantity of flour? The quantity of flour is 2 over 3. Why 3? Because that's the total. Multiplied with all how much did you have? 600 grams. That is how much of flour, the quantity that he has used. How do you do this then? This will be divide, divide. This will be 200. 200 times 2, 400 grams was flour. In the same way, you do the other one, 1 over 3 times with 600, and you would get 200 grams for butter. So 200 grams for butter, 400 grams for flour. You see, when you read a recipe, the recipe says use flour to butter in the ratio of 2 to 1. Okay? So maybe you have only, maybe you have 200 grams of butter. How many <coughs> grams of flour could you use? Double the amount, 400. Okay? Now, last question I would like you to try now. Number 10 there. Can you see the question number 10? Zach and Kenny are waiters in a restaurant. Maybe very soon you will also be working like this after SPM. The total amount of tips they receive at the end of the week. Total amount, uh, that means both of them add together already, is 126 pounds and 90 pence. Zach worked five nights and Kenny worked four nights. They decide to split the tips by the ratio of the nights they worked. Fair and square. So Zach to Kenny is five to four. Do you see that? Five days and he worked four days. So this is the total that they received at the end of the week. They're going to spend this money or share it out in this ratio. Five parts to four parts. So all together got how many parts? Nine. So how much did Zach get and how much did Kenny get? How much do they get each? You work out the calculation and tell me. Okay? Tell me in the chat. Zach is... How, what, how is, what is the calculation for Jack, uh, for Zach? Five, five over nine times one. Point Very six good. Point five eight. over nine times one, two, six point nine. Use your calculator, guys. Okay. At this point, you use your brain to think. Use the calculator to do the calculation. Very good. 70, 50 for Zach and 56, 40 for Kenny. Well done, Fatin, Krish, Dania. Do you see that? Now you can all go to work already. Very good. You can know how to split according to ratios. Hey, this is happening in real life. When people go to work, they do like this. Over time, all is paid in ratios. Okay? So, that's clear. I think you are okay so far with ratios. You have seen quite a good number of questions. Uh, this is the pastry. This is all the answers. Okay? That's all. We are done. We are done with ratios. Okay. So now I'm going to go to your module. Okay. Get your module out. Okay. Our module. And let's look at the questions over there. Have your module with you guys. All right, so this is our module. Suppose actually this is lesson 15, eh? okay? Day 15, but the lesson is in 14, okay? Oh, it's all right, so you print later. Now you see the questions, okay? Module is pretty easy, okay? The first part is ratio. What is ratio? The ratio between two quantities is the comparison between the two quantities. It can be written in the form of A to B. Okay, we have seen that. Make sure all quantities are in the same unit. So it cannot be in different unit, guys, before you making the before you make the comparison in the form of ratio. Ratio itself has no units. Okay, you have to take out the unit part from it. It only goes with the idea of parts. 
equivalent ratios can be found by simplifying ratios, which we also did. Okay, so we have done all these things already. Let's look at our questions. Okay, write the following pairs of quantities in the form of A to B. So what would be my first answer here? 3 kg to 5 kg. I got to take out the kg. So what I'll write? 3 to 5. That's it. Do you understand? Okay, the next one, 10 kilometers to 11 kilometers. I hope you're doing this on your side as well. It's 10 to 11. Can I simplify it? No. 10 to 11 is 10 to 11. That's it. Good. Two days to one week. Now, you can see now the unit is not the same already. But you know one week has got how many days? Seven days. Can. So, two to seven. Is there any way to simplify? No. So that's it. This is writing in the form of A to B. 9 centimeters to 40 centimeters. So answer would be 9 to 40. That's it. Centimeter to centimeter, you take it out. Now, is there any way to simplify this? Can't. Because you cannot divide it with any number on both sides. Okay? Cannot find a factor for both. How about the question number five? Five liters to nine liters to 12 liters. So three parts here. So five, take away the liters. Five to nine to 12. That's it. Liters, liters, liters. So no problem. Five to nine to 12. Any way of simplifying? No. So leave it as it is. So now the form is no more A to B. Huh? This is A to B to C. You see that? It goes in parts like that. Look at question number six. Tricky trickster. Because why? Unit is not the same. Unit is no more the same. So let's choose one unit that eases our life. Let's say it's millimeters itself. So that 1.2 centimeters, you will change it to millimeters. So it will become 12 millimeters to eight millimeters and to seven millimeters. But end of the day, I don't need my millimeter. I've already made it all the same. So it's 12 to eight to seven. Okay, and is there a way to simplify this? None. Okay, it stays like that. How about this, guys? Can you do the last part? Number seven, put in chat. Now you do. You can see the question on the screen. I've done already six questions. You should also be doing this on your side. Tell me the answer for number seven in the chat. Mm. Okay, your turn now. Okay. Uh, why are uh, you ready, Krish? Uh, Krish? Rishabh, good. Dania, good. One minute to one hour to quarter hour. I said first, the unit has to be the same. Yes or not? So you don't choose, you, you choose love which one you want. I think it's easier to choose with minutes. Choose minutes. I see only two answers, huh? Uh, Krish, Krish, okay. I think you need to rewrite for me, Krish, the whole thing. Can I uh, make it into like uh, 60 minutes, 60 hours? Uh, so 16. Okay. Fatin, how did you get 60 first? Why did you change it? Don't change the order. <laughs> no need to go for seconds, Rishabh, okay? We can do it with minutes. So guys, keep to one minute. Okay, one minute is fine. Change the one hour. How many hour, How many minutes are there in one hour, guys? 60, can? How about quarter? Quarter hour is 15. So your answer should be, keep that one minute. Okay, if you want to write minute, okay, fine. You change all to minute first. Two. One hour is considered 60 minutes. Okay? I don't want to put my S yet. Okay? 
quarter hour is 15 minutes. You see that? Oh my so God. So now, all my unit is the same. So I tick off already. Lah. Now I don't need my unit there because ratios don't come with units. So it's six. So it's one to 60 to 15. Fatin, you, do you see the, your mistakes? Maybe you just missed it. Okay, good. The rest of you, let's now go on to the next page, okay, of our module. Which of the following are equivalent ratios, which means can they be expanded? Can 5 over 1 become 20 to 4? Is it the same? So you got to ask yourself, how does 5 become 20 times 4? Yes or not? So how would I write it? I like to write it this way, 5 to 1, okay, becoming 20 to 4. So 5 times 4 will give you 20. Yes or not? In the same way, 1 times 4 will give you 4. So this is an equivalent ratio. Put a tick. You see that? It's yes. Now, can 7 over 4 okay, be an equivalent ratio to 14 over, to 16? Not 7 over. Like 7 to 4 be an equivalent to 14 to 16. So what you do is you try to simplify 14 to 16. So 14 to 16, if I want to simplify this, divide by 2, this will be 7 to 8. Can you see that? It's 7 to 8. It's not 7 to 4. So the answer is no. This is not an equivalent ratio. The first one is. Okay, do you see that, guys? You understand what's happening? Okay, let's go on to the third one, number three. There are three ratios here, 5, 15 to 10 to 6. Is it the same as 5 to 4 to 2? Now, the way is, use the bigger one and simplify it. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm right, 15 to 10 to 6. Huh. What number can I use to simplify? I cannot use anything. I cannot divide 15 with 2, although I can take 10 and 6 and divide by 2. I cannot take divide by 3 for 10. I cannot divide by 4. I cannot divide by 5. You remember we have learned about factors. This is where you use your knowledge. Remember finding the common factor? So there's really none. This is the simplest form already. Okay? So this number 3 is not an equivalent so ratio. How about this? 20 to 15 to 15. So let's simplify. 20 to 15 to 15. I can try times table 5. 20 divided by 5 is 4. 15 divided by 5 is 3. 15 divided by 5 is 3. So isn't it the same there? You have a common factor here. And yes, I get 4 to 3 to 3. So number 4. It is an equivalent ratio. Whatever you learn, nothing goes to waste. You see, this is connecting with your topic earlier. Factors and multiples. See that? Okay, over here, they have written in a fraction form. Okay, which should actually make your life easier. Is 9 over 7 the same as 18 over 16, guys? That's what they're asking. 9 to become 18, I times 2. But if I do the same thing to the bottom, it should be 14, not 16. You see that? So this is not an equivalent ratio. Got it? The next, the last question there. Is 2 over 5 the same as 6 over 15? So ask yourself, how did 2 become 6? Yes, I times 3. Yes or not? Remember, standard 6. So I have to do the same thing to the bottom. I times 3. And yes, 5 times 3 gets you 15. 2 times, two times 3 gets you 6. So 6 over 15 is an equivalent fraction. And in this case, equivalent ratio as well. 
Faham? Can I have a thumbs up if you guys understand what's happening? Okay. Good. Well done. All right. So far, so good, huh? Okay. I'm I'm taking my time with the ratio. So y'all, this is not everything yet. Okay. There are there's still I think one more module that we need to do. Now let's go to this part. Simplify each of the following. You have done this already. Five to fifteen. Come on. What does it become? One, two, three. You see that? Do it on your side, guys. Now make it fast. Ten to four. It's five. Sorry, it's five to two. Ten divided by two. Four divided by two. Good. How about this? Two over three. Two five over nine. Hmm. How to simplify this, huh? Five yeah. over six. You know how to do this, like this, okay? I times nine here, I times nine here. Why? Because I can make this nine disappear. Yes or not? End of the day, I will have only a five here. Now, what happens when I times nine here? This will become one and this will become three. What is two times three? Six. This is the simplified ratio. Do you see that? I will repeat again, okay? Two to three, two, five to nine. Now, whenever we see something like that, yeah, two to three parts to five to nine parts, it's so difficult to comprehend fractions in this way. But if I could give you in a number, like one to two or three to five, it's easier. How do I do it? I've got to get rid of my fractions. That's what I've got to do. Now, how do I get rid of a fraction here? You can see it's kind of a beautiful because the three and nine are multiples. So if I times... Nine. You remember when you do any operation to one side of the equation, you got to do it to the other side, then the equation stays the same. That's the rule for maths. So when I times nine, this nine and this nine cuts off and leaves me with five. Yes or not? The same thing I also have to do on the left hand side. Nine times two over three and this can become one and this will become three. So what is three times two? Six. In other words, two third to five to five over nine parts is the same as six to five. Can well, I have what? a thumbs up? Yes. Why do we have to um, for nine we cross both? So why three over nine? I mean three times nine you never which one, Risha? Which one are you asking? Number three or four? Three. Three. So what was your question? Why do I times nine? Is that your question? No. Um, for five over nine, you times nine and they cross out. But for the other yes. one, this one, they don't cross out. Correct. It doesn't cross out, but it, it there is 3 divided by 3 gives you 1 and 9 divided by 3 gives you 3. Remember? Right? How will you do this question 2 over 3 times 9? How will you do it? You can cross this outward. 1 and this is 3. Yes or not? And then up times up over 1. So this is 6. Why do I times nine? So that I can get rid of the nine. And why do I times nine on this hand, on the left hand side? Because whatever I do on the right, I've got to do it on the left. Why are you all giving me the answer five to two, five to two? Where do you all get? Oh, that is number two. Okay, sorry. Do you understand, Rishabh? Yeah. Okay, so let's clear. Let's do one more question there. There's number four there. So number four is five to six. Okay, to two to nine. Five to six parts to two to nine parts. Again, I want to get rid of my nine. 
So what I can do, I times nine on my right hand side. I also times nine on my left hand side. But wait, let's see whether we can get rid or not. Okay. So this will become cut off and this will leave us with a two. However, this one will be two, six divided by three would be two, nine divided by three would be three. And here you would have 15 over two. Yes or not? 15 over two. What do I do now? I don't want this two on this side. So I times two on my left and I also times two on my right. So these two will cancel off and this will become 15 and this will become four. Do you see that? A little bit more challenging, okay? Than just this and this, okay? This one, when it involves fractions, it can be a little challenging already, okay? But nevertheless, practice makes perfect. All right, let's see number five. Number five, uh, the unit itself is not the same. So the first thing we do is we want to make the unit the same. And I would suggest we use the, we don't want the decimals, we don't want fractions. All that is a mess. We want whole numbers. So let's work with 400 milliliters. We use milliliters, okay? So 1.2 liters, how many milliliters? 1,200 milliliters, correct or not? 0 0.8 liters is 800 milliliters. So now I've got everything in milliliters. Now I take out my milliliters and I have all just numbers. Yes or not? And I see 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. What do I do? I can divide by 100, everything. So this becomes 1 and this becomes 12 and this becomes 8. That's how I simplify. Do you see that? First, you make all the units the same. Then you put down, okay? All right, you take away the units. After you take away the units, you look at your numbers. It can be divided by 100 easily because everything has two zeros at the back. So 400 divided by 100, eh, sorry. 400 divided by 100 is four, okay? 1200 divided by 100 is 12. 800 divided by 100 is 8. Can this be simplified? Yes. 4, 12, and 8. Can, isn't it? Because everything is in time table 4. 4 divided by 4, 1. 12 divided by 4, 3. 8 divided by 4, 2. So this is your final answer. Anything more to simplify? I don't think so. 1 to 3 to 2. Okay, and as usual, I'm going to give you the last question to do. I bet, I think putting it in minutes would be the best. So try number six and tell me what's your answer in the chat. Okay, go on. Try number six now. One hour to 120 minutes to one fifth of an hour. So change everything to the same unit, then take off the units. Look at the numbers. Can you simplify it? Teacher for fraction ratio reader, I can do. Wait, I'm reading something from Risha. Teacher for fraction. Okay, Risha, what do you do is you, you send me a snapshot, okay, of your work, your solving method, okay? Now, Tristan, you have got that 60 to 120 to... Is one-fifth of an hour 15 minutes, Tristan? I don't think so. One-fifth of an hour is not 15 minutes. One-fifth of an hour is... How many minutes? Take 60 divided by 5. How much do you get? 12. So guys, okay, this one, 60 minutes, okay, to 120 minutes to one-fifth of an hour. 
okay one fifth of an hour which means take 60 divide by five you get 12 minutes am i right uh, now you get rid of huh um, is it one over five zero point two hello yeah. zero point two is one over five times 60 is how much ah uh, uh, okay 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 it's 12 minutes, yes or not? I want yeah, in correct. minutes. Right, correct, correct. So it's 12. Okay, so 60 to 120 to 12. Can we simplify this? Yes, yeah. we can. We can divide all of this with 12. 60 divided by 12 is 5 parts. 120 divided by 12 is 10 parts. 12 divided by 12 is 1 part. So those who gave me 5 to 10 to 1, that's right. Okay, very good, Fatin. Dania, Risha, three of you gave me this answer. Well done. Krish, five to ten to one. Tristan, do you understand? Gloria? Yes. Okay, sir. All right. So that's so far. Lah. Okay, that's simplifying ratios. Okay. I think I will stop here. Okay. And uh, this is the rates part. Okay. But if you guys, want to just look through i don't think any problem you know you can just try and see show to this ratio or the rates part when we come to rates it's more like your science variable okay just to give you a peek when you learn science you learn there are two types of variable a constant variable and a manipulated manipulated variable yes or not rate something like that there's two quantities that's corresponding to each other Okay, and the easiest way for you to understand rate is to look at your car. When your father drives your car every day in the, man, in the morning or your mom, the speed that you are going to is a rate. A rate of what? A rate of your distance that you travel over the time that you have taken. Okay, and the distance is calculated in kilometers, the unit, and the time is given in hours. So when that meter in your car, okay, shows something like that, maybe 60, it's pointing, your father is driving. It means 60 kilometers per hour, which means in one hour, if your father drives at that speed, that same constant speed in one hour, he would have covered a distance of 60 kilometers. One, one kilometer per minute. Now, what is it? One what did you ask? One kilometer per minute. Then you have to divide this hour. You don't take six, uh, you, you don't go by hours, you go by kilometer per minute. But you try and see, it really is like kind of a long calculation, okay? You see, uh, Richard mentioned there, miles per hour. Miles per hour, MPH. Miles per hour means, how, like just like kilometers, miles is a measurement used in US, okay? If I'm not mistaken, one kilometer is 1.8 miles, okay? So that's a different uh, calculation, a different distance. So there, over there, the cars will be like, okay, what's your speed? I'm driving at 60 miles per hour. They don't go, they don't go to minutes really. Okay, not because why you travel distances. Do you know what's the speed of the aeroplane? On your highway, you can maximum la, 110 kilometers per hour. This is the speed limit on our highways. If you go more than this, you get a fine. Okay. If you drive at 20 or 30 kilometers per hour, that means you are stuck in traffic jam maybe, all right? So you drive very slow. Do you know what's the speed of an aeroplane? It's easily about 700 kilometers per hour. Now, all this we are talking is speed. It's a rate. It shows two different quantities related to each other. So what are the two different quantities? One quantity is kilometer, the other quantity is hour. One quantity is mile, the other quantity is hour. Do you see that? 
Another example, your BMI, your body mass index. How do you calculate that? You go and find out. All of you, I give you a task. Go and find out what is the formula to find your BMI. It's a rate of your height to your weight. Okay? And they will tell you your BMI index. Now that's a rate. Some jets can go faster than the speed of sound. Yes, of course. Okay, jets are uh, that jets travel even faster than that. So I'm not going to get into this. This we will keep it for next week. All right, guys. So with that, I'm going to stop.